I got a question. What's a weird, kind of a weird or different build that you guys would like to see? Something like an LS swapped something, maybe. Something like that. Post in the comments below what you would maybe like to see in the future. Because we're trying to think about some future builds. I have one build I've been thinking about doing, which I'm not going to reveal yet. But uh, post down in the comments what you guys would like to see. What's up? We're back today working on the S10. As you can see, I got some of the stuff on. I got the alternator. Actually, I never even, oh no, I did tighten these bolts. And the power steering on. Pretty much that's it since the last video. So on today's video, we're gonna try to get this thing running, I hope. We got, um, yeah, everything to put back on. So before we put it back on, what I wanna do is I got this, I bought this sander machine here and I wanna take uh, the manifolds and just kinda sand along the surface to uh, make sure they're nice and flat. And when I pulled the gaskets off, I noticed that it looked like maybe it was leaking a tiny bit. You know, like it looked like maybe it was leaking a little, not quite sealing there a little bit. So I figured I would uh, do that just give her a little bit on there before we uh, put them on the car, truck. Before we put them on the truck, I mean, not car. So let's get to work. this a try I've never this is be my first try doing this so I don't know I haven't even really used this thing much since I bought it see I don't even know which way it spins the spins that way. okay so we'll put it this way and then I think uh, I was hoping all four of them would fit but it looks like only two will fit at a time so maybe I'll kind of do two and then two and there's actually a there's actually a, a stopper that goes on here which i took off because i had hoped that i could fit all four in one shot but it looks like that's not going to work nothing else it's mostly just going to clean the surface up good Well, you can tell that they're definitely not very level. I mean, I'm holding it totally flat on there. This part's not even touching. This one is pretty good. So maybe it's not a terrible thing to do this. Try to get them flattened out. Coming along now. Well, you could definitely tell that it was uh, not totally flat. Now, how much that affects its sealing with the gasket on, but it'll make a much nicer surface. Still needs a little bit here, looks like. Taken off to make it this as good, and here is nice, here a little bit. You can kind of see those marks from when they were machined. But compared to this side, uh, it looks pretty nice. So we'll just give her a little more and uh, this, these ones will be good. Now Clayton said he could have took these to work and did this on some fancy machine, but I figured everyone would yell at me that I'm letting Clayton use some fancy machine, so I'm doing it with a machine I have here. I think that's pretty good. I think I'll probably just... I'm going to try to get every single last little bit out, I think. And I'll do this side, and we'll see how it turns out. Turned out pretty good, actually. You know, there's still, but I mean, this part isn't where it seals anyways. Obviously, it just seals 
around here, you know, not around uh, the way outside part, but uh, gave that a little extra too. And then I also, I gave the uh, V-band a little just to make sure it was good and flat and clean. Because I wasn't sure, I thought maybe these would be a bit warped. TIG welded on there and got really hot. So that's good. So now that one can go on and then I'll end up doing the other side also and get them all good and flat and we can get putting this thing together. All right. Whoa. Shit. All right. So I jacked the truck up, crawled underneath, put the converter bolts in and put the starter in and those last two transmission bolts. Tip, tech tip, which I knew myself, but I didn't follow was put the three torque converter bolts in loose at first and then tighten them up because I put in two, tighten them, went to the third one. It wasn't quite lined up and I stripped the bolt a little bit and then I had to get another bolt. So that was kind of a pain. So what I'm going to do now is uh, hook up the couple starter wires. I already got the crank sensor plugged in. After that, the this manifold can go on and then the exhaust can go on and then we can lower the truck down so that uh, I don't have to stand on a thing here to get up here. Nice to be able to uh, get at these wires when it's not on the ground or not you're not laying on the ground, which is kind of a pain. And that one, I'm going to lose the socket. It's going to fall into the intake port. Okay, so that's the starter. I also got to put this temp gauge in, which I'll get some uh, thread sealant to put on there beforehand. Eventually, maybe I'll put a Terminator X on here or something, and then I won't have to have manual or mechanical, I should say, gauges on here. And now, this is what we got. And I got the wrong wrenches. What? Oh. This temp gauge just goes into where the coolant temp would be on the other side. We just drilled and tapped it to the bigger size to put a regular type fitting in there. Took a die grinder and I went inside and I just cleaned the edges up a little bit because there was like casting flash. I don't think it, oh, this is the wrong manifold. I don't think it's gonna matter, but uh, yeah. And then I grabbed the wrong manifold after all. But this one is the same. This is the second one that I cleaned up. And like I said, I also cleaned up in there a little bit. Probably not necessary, but I figure what the heck. But hopefully, Smoothing them out there will make them seal a little better. Even though, like I said, they looked like they were sealing pretty well. I'm really excited to hear this thing run and hopefully it uh, sounds good. Can't see why it wouldn't. I almost forgot the dipstick has to go in, just like the original, except it's, and it is an original dipstick. It's just, uh, I probably should use a shorter bolt for this. It's just been cut down. Now we got the exhaust, which can be a little tricky to feed in there. Here. That's why I would do it now while the turbo and everything is off. If I can only remember how to get it in there. Or should I have done this before I put the manifold on? Yep, I think I have to take the manifold off again, unfortunately and put it on this in here first. <sighs> hmm, yeah, crap. Because I don't think it's gonna clear any other way. <sighs> Sucks. Of course, my idea was it would be easier to take the, put the manifold on with the exhaust out of the way, but I guess this is how it has to go. It is a tight fit, so it does make sense that it would be kind of a pain. But no big deal. So I got the truck lowered down. I also put the coils on that side. Because it's tight back there, I actually notched out the manifold here like a header so that 
I can just put it in there and the bolt is already like part way in. This makes it easier. Easier especially for removal because you don't have to take the bolt off all the way. I got that all bolted on. I got the steering shaft back in. And now the next thing to do will be to put the coils on. And then once the coils are on, then we can put the turbo on. And then we're gonna almost be done. This is the one thing about LS engines that I don't like is the, I mean, I like the individual coils, but they're so ugly. That's why on my car, I hid them underneath. And if I had the room underneath the engine here, I would probably move these ones too. But I mean, I could move them to like on here or something, but then that they're still there and they're still ugly. So that's not gonna really make a difference. I look before getting some like different kind of like small block Chevy valve covers, old school looking ones or something and putting them over top. But then I already have no room here as it is. So now we're gonna wrestle this big boy into place. I hope. This time I put the drain line on the turbo so it wouldn't be a pain. Now we got it mostly in place. Yeah, okay. Good. So now, huh, that's uh, tiring. Now we just got to get the V bands on. They're pretty good unless you don't quite have them lined up when you tighten them. I hate when you think something's threading and then it's actually not threading. And you're turning it and you're like, hmm, why is it not going? Especially these AM fittings cranny cooler line fittings. Whenever it's something that's hard to get it, it always seems like it. Oil feeds on, or drain I should say. The oil feed is right here, so that can go on. All right, so I went ahead and put the water pump and the belt and the radiator and the fan on. So that's all on. So pretty much it's ready to go other than putting the intake on which we're gonna do now, and then hook up all the wiring and the fuel line, and that'll probably be about it. It'll be ready to put oil in and fire it up. Intake coming up there. Okay. I gotta, gotta get this in place, and then make sure that the oil feed line is underneath there. There we go. We're in there. This would be the um, narrow band O2 sensor, which goes here. That's good. Okay, for this side, it has more stuff. Coils. The other thing is, I just have to make sure that I put everything on the right side of all this vacuum line fuel lines, otherwise it doesn't fit right and it looks, doesn't look good. This is too much stuff here. That's why what's good about something with a carburetor on it. See, now I've got, I shouldn't have put this on yet. All right, now I just gotta tighten up the intake bolts, run the throttle cable and tighten all this other stuff. All right, so I got the intake bolted down, fuel line, uh, throttle cable, the charge tubes on. So now it's time to find out uh, what's 
going to happen. Let's first check for fuel leaks. I don't have any antifreeze. I, I, the antifreeze that I drained out, I don't know if I'm going to put it back in there. I might wait to buy some fresh stuff, but I can't drive it anyways. So I think it's okay. I don't know. I mean, the lifters were noisy when I first fired it up, but then after it ran for a bit, it seemed to quiet down. So maybe that's just because the lifters needed to pump up and oil needed to fill. It had like good oil pressure and all that stuff. Um, from inside the truck, I can't hear it at all. So, um, yeah, I think it's good. I don't know. Maybe I'll try and start it up again for you guys and see how it sounds now. I also think it might have a little bit of like piston slap when it's cold because of the aluminum block and stuff. But uh, once it got warm, it seemed okay. Like I said, I'll start it up again and let's see what happens. I don't know I mean to me it sounds like um, I can still hear some lifter noise but I definitely don't hear that loud clacking that it had before so I don't know I guess we're gonna have to wait and see but to me it sounds better than it did before I pulled the motor out and I mean definitely the uh, 
this bent rod and you could tell that it was totally banging up against the crank right here so that was definitely an issue and like I said there when I just started up it actually sounds really quiet before when it would just be idling you could hear it going tick 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 like that so guess we'll see what happens but anyways guys that's gonna be it for this video and probably it for the s10 for a little while we're gonna get to work back to work on the gto got some stuff coming for the nova so stay tuned and uh, we'll check you later